Despite being in 7th place at the minute, Manchester United are nowhere near where they want to be. In FIFA it's a similar situation too. They have a squad of very average players who are all on long contracts with big wages, meaning they're a team that totally needs a rebuild. Today, we'll be going through their entire squad, looking at the types of rebuilds you can do, talking about who you should sign and how to rebuild Manchester United in a fun but still realistic way. United are actually perfect for rebuilds because they have everything you need. They have a world-class academy, they have one of the biggest transfer budgets in the game and they also have a history of attracting players that wouldn't normally join a club that's in their position. The way I see it, there are three different distinct paths you can take when rebuilding United. You can rebuild with young players like Man United did back in the 90s, you can rebuild with strategic purchases like Manchester City did about a decade ago, or you can rebuild with superstars and create some Galacticos like Real Madrid did in the years between Ronaldo and Vinicius Jr. Let's have a quick look at these three different kinds of rebuild and I'll tell you how you can apply them to Manchester United. Recently, Arsenal and Barcelona both embraced youth-focused approaches to their rebuilds. They appointed former players as managers and cleared out almost every high earner who didn't fit in with the manager's vision. United have one of the best academies in England, so could easily copy this style of rebuild. Saka and Smith-Rowe at Arsenal and Pedri and Gavi at Barcelona show that academy-based rebuilds really can work, and United also have some of the best young managers who were former players, so you can easily find your own Xavi or Arteta. I think combining the academy with Michael Carrick would probably be the best way to do this kind of rebuild, but the other two types we're going to talk about in just a second can be just as fun. You have some other alternatives for managers if you don't like Carrick, Ruud van Nistelrooy, Wayne Rooney and Phil Neville are all options, but all three have been pretty unsuccessful in their managerial careers so far. If you don't feel like relying on your academy in the Premier League, you could always copy one of your biggest rivals. Manchester City's recent success lies in the strategic thinking and identifying weak points in the squad. They hired some elite backroom staff, which is exactly what you are, and also made some key signings to address their biggest weaknesses. You might remember that season where Manchester City spent about 50 million on seven or eight different fullbacks, but this worked for them. They went on to have Kyle Walker and Jao Cancelo as their fullbacks, and nobody on earth remembers that Danilo or Benjamin Mendy cost that much money. We can easily emulate this in career mode by buying a bunch of players that fit your style and just buy two or three for every single position. Keep the two you like the most and just keep cycling through players until you've got a squad that's ready to compete at the top end of the league. If you don't like the idea of buying lots of good players just to figure out if you like them, then maybe Real Madrid's transfer strategy might be a bit more up your street. When they faced the task of replacing Cristiano Ronaldo last decade, they made a few calculated gambles. First of all, they spent £45 million on a 16-year-old Vinicius Jr. and also bought the best winger in the world at the time, Eden Hazard. Maybe Manchester United could adopt a similar strategy by signing big names and also having a young player to try and replace your outgoing stars. This is the policy I'm going to assume you're going to go with for most of today's video, but what I will give some examples of the other kinds of rebuild as we go through the squad. The Galactico model seems to fit modern United probably the best, but of course, I do recommend you spend as much as you can on the academy, especially with Manchester United, because they do have a pretty good record of bringing through young players. Okay, so by now you should have probably picked the kind of rebuild you want to do. Let's have a look through the squad and find out who we should keep and who we should put in the bin. Well, I think we should start at the back, so let's start in goal, and Andre Onana has already been downgraded twice this year. He started off as an 85 rated player, and now he's down to 83. He's still a good player in FIFA, but if you're watching this in June, he could even easily be 80 rated if he keeps having such a bad season. You also have Bayern Deer and Tom Heaton as the two backup goalkeepers, but neither of these are going to have any potential. You have no real choice but to start Onana, at least in Season 1. That means that at the moment, I think the goalkeeper situation is good enough for you to survive, but you can definitely upgrade your goalkeeper going into Season 2. Slightly ahead of the goalkeeper, of course, you find two centre-backs, and United's centre-back situation is definitely better than their goalkeeper one. Because they're not injured inside career mode, Varane and Martinez is actually still a really good combination when it comes to career mode. Weirdly, Martinez is actually higher rated at defensive midfielder than centre-back, so if you do decide to sign a new one, you could easily move him forwards into midfield. If you do decide to retrain Martinez, then you'll be relying on backups like Maguire, Evans and Lindelof, who really shouldn't be playing many minutes for you in Season 1. I'd say that you should definitely spend some of the transfer money on a new centre-back. If you're going for a young player rebuild, I would definitely suggest you look at Jarrell Hatto as your number one target. He's got the potential to be world-class, and you can pick him up and his 88 sprint speed for a very cheap price. 
If you prefer a bigger name, then of course Tamori, Bastoni and Todibo would all improve your defence, and none of them are actually that expensive when it comes to having a Man United sized budget. A fullback? United are actually really well prepared. You'll have four options, with Lindelof as the fifth backer. Luke Shaw, Wan-Bissaka, Diego Delo and Malassia all have potential to reach around 83 overall, and you should have a nice balance here of youth and experience. Again, this isn't really an area that you need to rebuild in-game, even if a lot of people would suggest you do in real life. Someone like Malassia hasn't actually impressed in real life, but a lot of his reputation for being a good defender came from looking good against wingers like Anthony. Okay, so let's move on to what I think is the biggest problem area in the United squad. We're playing this as realistically as we can, so your defensive midfielder options are Casemiro, Eriksen, Amrabat, McTominay and Donny van der Beek. We're going to leave out Kobe Mainu for Season 1, but seriously give this guy as much time as you can to try and improve him. He'll be the best midfielder in the squad and maybe even the league by the end of Season 3. Ok, so what do United actually need in midfield? I think one man would help them out a lot, and that's Fulham's Palhinha. If you could move from a double pivot to a single CDM, this would allow someone like Eriksen or McTominay to play further forward, and unlike Casemiro, Palhinha can actually run. It might sound questionable in real life, but a midfield three of Bruno, Mount and Palhinha would actually work really well inside career mode. You've got a lot of creativity, all of them are going to go up and down the pitch as much as you can, and there's actually a decent amount of pace to say they're three very good midfielders. Of course, you probably want to upgrade on Mason Mount, but he's a decent homegrown player and it's hard to realistically suggest an alternative that Man United could sign. If you are doing a younger player career mode, then you could always try and steal Archie Gray from Leeds, despite Leeds and Manchester United having a massive rivalry in real life and this probably not being the most realistic signing. The rest of the squad is basically just attackers, and the attack is actually in a really good situation on FIFA. You can think what you like about Anthony, Garnacho, Sancho, Hoyland and Rashford in real life, but on FIFA, they're all either world class already, or have the potential to be there within a couple of seasons. I mean, do you really see someone like Hoyland having the potential to be better than Salah, Osimhen and Griezmann are right now? I don't think that I do, but if you develop him, he can easily get to that kind of level. If you develop all 5 of these players, you'll have an attack with every single one of them being over 85 rated, and that is more than good enough to win the Premier League. So, what signings do United actually need to make? Potentially a goalkeeper, if you have some spare money, and the same can be said at right back as well. It's not crucial to improve there, but you can improve that position pretty easily. Two centre backs are definitely needed in real life, with neither Varane or Martinez actually being injury prone in FIFA, I think you can get away by just signing one. I think central midfield is where most of your money needs to go. You could get Palhinha, or you could probably get Ruben Neves a little bit cheaper if you want to bring him back to England from Saudi Arabia, but either of them is going to improve the kind of fluidity of your team, give you a bit more pace in midfield and it's definitely going to win you more points than Casemiro. In attack, I'd say you don't really need to buy anyone here, but lots of United fans would be happy to see someone like Nico Williams from Athletic Bilbao, Leroy Sane or Mikel Elise joining the club, and all of these would be fun to sign inside the game. Overall, the United squad is probably rated too highly compared to what they're doing in real life, especially on potential, but they do have the ability to rebuild inside career mode in any way you want, and I promise they'll be fun to use no matter what you do with the Red Devils. Hopefully you enjoyed today's video, if you are a United fan and you think I got something badly wrong, let me know in the comments because that will definitely help me out in the future. But thanks for watching, I'll see you soon, cheers and goodbye.